Today's the day we've all been waiting for. We're putting the final touches on the first ever MVK1 prototype, which means we'll be able to take it for a test ride very soon. Ooh. Are we ready? Yeah, go. Oh my gosh. Holy crap. Look at this thing. <laughs> it's alive. We want to get it home today so we could test everything before we like finalize the design. And so he made the front end rigid just for now so we could test it. And then he'll work on the front end, which is all the machining of the aluminum um, next week. And that's going to take time. But because I want to get this home and assemble it, um, I'm going to take it as is with the rigid. But Holy crap, it is here. Now that the MBK one is almost done, Tom and I need to finalize a list of everything we need to do today in order for me to be able to take the MBK one home tonight. There is still quite a bit left to do. It's exciting, but also nerve wracking because like everybody keeps asking, well, what's the price? I don't know because I still don't know exactly all the details when it comes to like every component of the bike. So until we know that, then we'll know the price and then we'll reveal it on the pre-sale. Click the link below to register for it and then you'll know how much it's going to cost. But at least we can actually see it. Like it's starting to look like a legitimate bike right now with the handlebars on, swing arm on, we got the engine plate there. We just need a seat, some wheels and an engine and we're good to go. A lot of other things, but. Tom is going to start by welding the rigid front end together while I reassemble the rear wheel. Let's get to it. We just got the handlebars back from Tom and I'm gonna mount it on the bike right now, which means I'll be able to put the front wheel on, then we could put it down on the ground and I could finally sit on it for the first time. One of the most important things when it comes to steering is the type of bearings that you have in the neck. And so traditional mini bikes have just standard like 60, 61 bearings. But the problem with those, like they're not necessarily built for force from up and down. It's mostly just for rotational force. And so what we're going with is a like cup and cone style bearing here. Not only will it allow you to have a smooth rotation for the actual handlebars, it's designed to work with stuff that has pressure and force from top and bottom. So we created these little flanged bushings that fit right in it but literally this just fits inside like that. This is gonna make it a much more smoother ride. And also at the end of the day, the quality of these bearings, they'll just be so much more durable. They'll last a lot longer. And I think people are gonna be really happy that we went with this route rather than the traditional 6061 type of bearing. So yeah, really excited about these. We need the bottom cup and cone bearings that go there. That goes here like that. Oh, like a glove. Got to line it up. Come on. There it is. I could officially sit on this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's actually really freaking cool. So here it is, the first official MBK1 prototype. There's still lots to do, we're not done, but it's here. I can finally pick it up, take it for a ride. Well, roll it. <laughs> this is the first time I'm sitting on the MBK1 prototype and this feels unreal. Whew. I can't explain what I'm feeling because this has been such a long time in the making but hopefully you see how cool this is. Again, we have the rigid front end on it, so it's gonna be even better once we have the full suspension version, but I think this is really, really good. So now that the wheels and handlebars are mounted, we can weld on the engine plate. Ready for an engine? Ready for an engine. We got the wheels on, we got the engine plate 
securely mounted. And now we're gonna tackle the last problem, which is the bracket for the brake caliper. I think we're gonna utilize what we've already built and just weld it on as is, but we might need to put a little bit of material because I think it's just too small. Tack it across here and then tack it on the backside when we take the caliper off. Oh, I see, okay. Okay, let's take it home. All right, this is it. We're officially bringing it home after a few weeks. The question is though, will it even fit in my car? I think it should fit. Luckily the car has a nice little dip in it. So I don't think we have to take the handlebars off, but we're gonna have to go sideways with it. Wish us luck, hit that like button and hopefully it will fit in here. It should, it should. No, we're good. We got it. Let's get it home, then get it built, and then finally take it for a test ride. Let's go. All right, I'm gonna show dad, see what he thinks. There she is. Oh no. I might have to let some air out of this tire. Dad, I need your help. <laughs> Just keep your eyes closed though, it's a surprise. Okay. Do me a favor, I need you to push from the back because it's kind of locked keep in here. No, no, go to the, go over there. Holy Jesus. We start, I need your help back there. Oh we'll, we'll my God. <laughs> so one second, I want you to oh, oh. This is incredible. How did you get it in here? Wait, I think I got it. Crazy guy. Okay. Holy Jesus, this is it, eh? Here we go. Oh. Oh my God, look at this. There she is. Wow. Let's go downstairs and put it together. You ready? Mm hmm Even though it was getting pretty late, after putting the MBK1 on the bench, we couldn't resist the urge to put an engine in it. So we grabbed our Honda GX270, but that's when we ran into an issue. I don't know how we're gonna make it work without these being made out of metal. We can't actually run the jack shaft. So we decided to call it a night and tackle the issue in the morning. Because we don't have the machined metal housings for the jack shaft, we actually need to use a smaller engine so we can literally run it all the way to the back without having to use the jack shaft. Now, this is not what we recommend, but we just wanna test it so we can actually take the bike for a ride today. So we're gonna get rid of this plastic jack shaft and hopefully we can run the chain all the way to the back. This is a 212, but look how small, it's so look small. Look how little it is. <laughs> it's a kid's oh toy. God, it's, it's a baby. This is actually a Power Fist 212. This is the Canadian Princess Auto version of Harbor Freight, which they use Predator, but this is a Power Fist. Before we do anything, let's put the rear sprocket on. Okay. Let's put the clutch on, and then let's put the chain on just to see if it will line up. And huge shout out, Go Power Sports. We're collaborating with them to figure out what is the best kit for the MBK1. So they sent us some really awesome parts, a couple chains, and we're gonna get to test a couple different things to see what is truly the best setup for the MBK1. So let's see here. Well, this is the gold on black. Ho, ho, oh yeah. yeah, that looks good. So this is, ten, oh, this is five feet. Okay, so let's see if it's long enough. Oh, it's nice and greased up already too. Yeah, now that's a chain. But we can, we can make it smaller, so that's fine. Yeah, we're gonna have to. Yeah, Ooh, I like this. This is beautiful. Again, we do not recommend running the chain like this. This is no. only for demon. Just this is only for us to test it today. It will never run like this ever again after today. So don't do what we're doing. Do what we say. Don't do what we do. Now with the right chain, we just need to make sure it is the perfect length so that we can actually get this running. So when I got the chain on, we're good there. Now we're just going to align the engine so it is perfectly straight with the rear sprocket. And then we'll tighten everything up and then we'll move on to the handle grips, throttle, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> so one of the reasons why we wanted to make horizontal slots is because right now we need to adjust the engine a little bit left or a little bit right to make sure the chain is actually straight all the way back. Usually you have to drill new holes in the engine plate, 
but because of the horizontal slots, we can literally just shift the engine over exactly where it needed to be. There's so much travel, it can literally move that much, which is amazing. After a bit of fine adjustment, the chain is now straight, the engine is on tight, and the only thing left to do is install the throttle. We got these Moose Racing Stealth Grips here. It's really cool, there's this thick kind of feel this, Dad. This is actually really nice. It's, it's not, it's oh, like, yeah. I don't know what these are. I guess your hands go there, but it like feels like it has extra little grip, but yeah, these good. are very nice. Oh, I get it. When you wrap your hand around it, so the fingertips go in there, so it gives you a little bit better grip. Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, where'd you get that from? Was that in the shed? No, that was down there. So this is from a Coleman? No, I don't even know where that's or from. Or a Baja, maybe. I don't know. Anyways, it's a- it's I probably pretty, found it. It's a pretty big seat. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Well, it's not that heavy. Okay. Oh. That shock definitely moves. Here we go. MBK1, test run one. If you haven't yet, click the link below to register for the VIP sale where we're only gonna be selling 25 of these and uh, you could be one of the first 25 to own one. So let's go take it for a ride. Okay, Gina, you ready? No. All right, here we go. We're gonna put some gas in it, start it up, take it for a ride. You sure that's what you wanna do? That's what we gotta do. Okay, let's do it. Hey, man. Are we ready? Yeah, go. This dream is coming true now. So we thought. Turns out this dream is starting to feel like a nightmare. Oh, there's a chain. Or broke. It broke? No, no, it came off. Well, did it? No, I think. Oh, Jesus, it broke. It actually broke. Oh, my God. Maybe it was too tight. Like it actually is twisted. Yeah, something got it. Something grabbed it. What would have grabbed it? I don't know. Look, if someone twisted it, it's twisted. That wasn't what we expected. Um, no, it definitely was touching something. Do you think on the bike? Because it was, we were able to roll it, no problem. Well, luckily, we have another chain. So we took off the broken one and replaced it with a new one. And this time, I'm gonna let my dad drive to see if he has better luck. I'm gonna put this GoPro on here just to see if we can see if the chain happens to break again. I think it's too long, that's what I think. It most likely is. I think once we put the jack shaft there, I think we'll be 100 times better. But at least we'll be able to tell if something happens. We'll be able to see it. Let me try slow first. Oh, there it is again. All right, so as my dad was driving by, we heard a click, click, click. So it could be that the chain is just maybe too loose because we don't have the jack shaft or a chain tensioner. And so there's a good chance that maybe when it's loose, it just hits the frame at a, such a high speed that it breaks it, so. <laughs> you were down there, what happened? Because I thought it broke again. No, no, it didn't break, it just came off. It just, the chain came off? Yeah, the okay. chain came off. So I think maybe maybe the chain is just too loose. Again, this was something we didn't think was gonna work, but clearly. Yeah, I think there's too much flapping at the back. But then what caused it to break? You could see it's all scratched right in here. And so what we believe happened is because the chain's too long without a chain tensioner or anything, it came off, got stuck in here, and basically just pulled it, which is why it, it, it ripped it and cut here. Little, yeah. And it gouged all of the sprocket too. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, no, it was pretty bad. That's probably why the chain broke, understandably. Luckily, when it came off when my dad was riding, it didn't break. So we still have this chain here. But again, we don't need to say it any more times, but we just want you guys to understand. We know this is not how it should be set up. 
you need a chain tensioner or a jack shaft so that this doesn't happen, but we just were so excited. We need to take it for a ride to make sure everything functions as it should. But now that we've done this, we have our list of items that we need to present to Tom in order to finalize the bike to get it ready for the launch. So if you haven't yet registered for it, click the link below, register to be one of the first 25 people to own an MBK1, April 27th. It's coming soon. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>